guys welcome to enchanted bookends i'm ankita and today i am super excited because i am going book shopping it has been a really long time that i have been to the bookstore that is very close to my place and i'm super excited to go and explore what new books they have having said that i do want to buy two books the first one is the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune i already have a Kindle version of this book but as I was reading it I just felt like this is one of those books that I would really like to own a physical copy of. It's just like a very cozy book. And the second one that I'm planning to buy is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I don't think I've ever mentioned it on this channel but I am a really huge Marquez fan. Gabriel Garcia Marquez is one of those writers whose writing is exquisite and gorgeous. He just takes his narration to an altogether different level. I don't even think I can do justice in explaining how good his writing is. Uh, he is also the king of magical realism. If you guys don't know what it is, magical realism is like a perfect blend of fantastical elements and realism what the authors do in magical realism is that they introduce these paranormal supernatural elements or fantastical elements in a very realistic and sometimes very brutal settings having said that i have not read all the books by Mar garcia marquez i make it a point to read one of his work every year and it has been several years that i haven't read him read his work just because life happened Anyways, however, I do plan to make up for those lost years by reading one of his one of his most popular works that is 100 Years of Solitude. One of my favorites of his is Of Love and Other Demons. Of Love and Other Demons is is such a beautiful work. I think it is one of his lost novels and you can tell because it is written with such perfection. Not that his other works are not perfect but this one is like sheer perfection you cannot find anything wrong with it it's truly magical i read this book five or six years ago so from what i can remember is that it's a story about a girl and a priest so this girl is a teenager and she gets bitten by a rabid dog and a lot of uh, villagers are bitten by this dog and a lot of them die from uh, rabies but this girl does not contract this disease and because she does not contract this disease she is considered to be demonically possessed and so she is brought to a convent for exorcism and this priest falls in love with uh, this girl and unbeknownst to the bishop the priest visits this girl in her cell every day and he forms a very romantic attachment with her essentially from the name you can tell of love and other demons it is a story about for how superstitious beliefs can lead to dangerous endings it also gives us insight into how love is almost demonic so it is one of my favorite works and i highly recommend it to everyone who loves literature it's one of the classics that you should read i haven't read 100 years of solitude so obviously i cannot compare it with this one but you know, of all the works that I've read of his, Of Love and Other Demons is my favorite. Okay, so these are the two books that I'm planning to buy and we'll see how it goes. And I'll take you along with me. And I'll try to film a little bit in the store. I am not sure how much I'll be able to do, but I'll try my best. Uh, so I'll see you in about an hour. I don't think that much is enough for me to shop. Ah, I'll see you in a few hours.
I'm back. Every time I visit a bookstore, I'm so happy to see all the books. I feel like I'm actually overwhelmed. I forget what books I am there to get and uh, I spent so much time looking for the books that I wanted and uh, we'll see how many I was able to find and any other books I found. So the books that I got are these. I don't know if you can see but the first one is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. Look at the cover. It is stunning, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Oh, I also want to add that this one won the John Newbery Medal. So if you are looking for good books, look for the books that have got the John Newbery Medal or those that were even nominated or shortlisted. Okay, I have had this book on my TBR for quite some time and I I don't know, I was just waiting for the right moment to buy this book when I would have time to read. But I came across this and look at the price. It's just $4.99. It's super cheap. Um, and this does not look like a used book. It almost looks new to me. So I'm pretty happy I got a deal on this one. So what more can I ask for? I don't know exactly what the story is about so I'm just gonna read like the back of the book and we'll find out together that is if you aren't already familiar with this I think I'm pretty late this one came out a few years ago probably four or five years ago anyways let's get into the summary okay. every year the people of the protectorate leave a baby as an offering to the witch who lives in the forest to keep her from terrorizing their town but the witch, Zan, is really gentle and kind. She shares her home with a wise swamp monster and a perfectly tiny dragon. Mmm, I'm already intrigued. Zan rescues the children and delivers them to welcoming families on the other side of the forest. Oh, that's so sweet. Kind of. Mmm, kind of, right? I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's kind of nice of her, but she could give the kids just like back to the family that they belong to. Could she? Ah, uh, I don't know. Anyways, one year, so this one year, Zan accidentally feeds a baby moonlight, filling the ordinary child with extraordinary magic. Zan decides she must raise this girl, whom she calls Luna, as her own. That is such a lovely and appropriate name for a girl who is filled with moonlight magic. Luna. Very lovely. As Luna's 13th birthday approaches, her magic begins to emerge with unpredictable consequences just when it's time for Zan to go collect another child. Meanwhile, a young man is determined to free his people by killing the witch. Oh no! And a volcano, dormant for centuries, rumbles within the earth. And that's the summary. Oh, there's also a quote on the back. It says, there is magic in starlight, of course. This is well known. Moonlight, however, that is a different story. Moonlight is magic. Ask anyone you like. Okay, so I'm super excited for this one. All right, the second one I've got is Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb. This one is uh, the first book in the Fitz and the Fool trilogy. And I got this for only $9.99. It's a hardback. No, <laughs> it's a hardcover. This is the last uh, trilogy by Robin Hobb in this magical world of Elderlings. I wouldn't recommend you read this book if you haven't read uh, all of her previous trilogies. This one is a continuation of uh, the story of Fitchivalry Farseer, who is a royal bastard and who is basically raised to be an assassin for royal family's gain. It is very much a book about royal family dynamics and politics, but it is set in this really uh, intriguing and very well-built magical system or the world. The world building is just fantastic. Now what I like about Robin Hobb and what is different about her magical world it's not just fun and frolic it is a very intelligent world building which i really like 
And one of the things that Robin Hobb really excels in is her character development. The character development in all of her books is uncomparable. I haven't ever seen any, any, any author come even close to what Robin Hobb does with her characters. So if you're planning to read Robin Hobb books, you can start with the Farseer trilogy. I'm not a big fan of that trilogy, although a lot of people do like it, but stick with it because it does get better. Then the second is the Life Ship Traders trilogy, which is my favorite in all of her trilogies and all of her books. Again, the first book in this one, which is Ship of Magic, is kind of a drudge. You just have to go through it. It's like 800 pages of pathos, but it is definitely worth it because the next two books are brilliant in that trilogy. The third one is the Tawny Man trilogy. In this one, you will see the characters from the first trilogy, the Farseer trilogy. So we again follow the story of Fish Chivalry Farseer. I cried a lot while reading this trilogy. I don't think I've ever, ever cried as much as I've cried reading this trilogy. The fourth one is actually a quartet, and that is the Rain Wilds Chronicles. Again, the world building is remarkable in this one. So these are the books that you do need to read if you want to start reading the Fitz and the Fool trilogy. Um, and all of the books are chunky, except for the first one, the Farseer trilogy. But once you start reading her books, you will feel like even th this is not enough. This one is 664 pages. I'm super excited about this one. However, I am disappointed that I could find only one book. I wish I had found the entire series, but they only have this one. So I'm going to order the other two books on Amazon and then I'm going to start reading this book, this series, when I am in the mood for crying. So these are the two books that I got and... Uh, I'm super sad that I wasn't able to find 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and the other one, The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Kloon. I hope you found this vlog helpful or interesting. All right, thank you for watching. Please uh, don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and family. If you have any questions or you have any book recommendations, please leave them in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.